Greetings, I'm Jack, 29 years old. When I first met Abigail, the love of my life, we instantly clicked. Our energies connected, we shared interests, and had a genuine love for each other. Abigail was not just beautiful and smart, but radiated a contagious zest for life. As we embarked on our exciting journey together, blissfully unaware of the challenges ahead, things were great between us. However, tension arose whenever her parents, Janet and Benjamin, were around. They held classist views and couldn't fully accept me into their high society bubble. Unlike Abigail, I didn't come from a wealthy background and had to work hard for everything. During our first dinner together, I sensed their judgmental eyes and heard subtle comments about my less-than-lavish lifestyle. Initially cordial and friendly, they created an illusion of acceptance, but their true colors emerged once they realized I didn't come from money. I remember that day vividly. As we engaged in small talk, their curiosity about me became apparent. The conversation flowed smoothly until my background and profession came up. The atmosphere shifted and their tone changed subtly. Janet, with an artificial smile, asked about my job as a graphic designer. I passionately explained my love for creativity and art. There was a momentary pause and I saw disappointment in their eyes. Benjamin tried to conceal judgment with false enthusiasm, saying, Graphic design, huh? That's quite different from our line of work. The condescending tone made it clear they had certain expectations for the kind of man Abigail should be with. I've always found myself captivated by people who flaunt a luxurious way of living and belong to a special group of privilege. Yet what truly excites me is the realm of art and design. In this creative space, I get to turn thoughts into reality and craft visually captivating moments. Even though it may not always be a breeze financially, the satisfaction I derive from the work is immense. I firmly believe in following one's passions rather than only running after money. When asked about how I make a good living, I admit that my job has its highs and lows. Despite the difficulties, I love what I do and find it really satisfying. I believe in following your passions rather than just chasing money. When my parents worry about my career choices and judge me based on what I do for a living, Abigail supports me. She reminds everyone that my value isn't determined by my job or how much money I make. Abigail's folks keep worrying about our future, saying it's crucial to have enough money. Abigail believes in our shared values, love, and backing each other's dreams. But during dinner, her mom's awkward remark creates some tension. Abigail tries to shift the talk, assuring her parents that I'm not broke and our bond is more than just money. I choose not to let their opinions shape me, staying devoted to proving my true value through actions and how I treat Abigail. As the night goes on, it becomes obvious that Abigail's parents have strong ideas about money and social standing. I see that, even though I genuinely care about Abigail and have good intentions, I might not completely match their idea of a perfect partner. Determined not to let their opinions affect our love, I decide to show my value through my actions. Little did I realize that this meeting would kick off a chain of events that would challenge our relationship and take us on a journey of learning more about ourselves and staying strong. But that's a story for another day, full of triumphs, self-discovery, and the strong bond shared between Abigail May and myself. Abigail, to her credit, consistently had my back. Even after uncomfortable dinners, we kept meeting, committed to getting to know each other better. When her parents rudely commented on my social standing or financial stability, Abigail stood up for our love against their snide remarks and snobbish attitudes. It was evident that she struggled between her love for her family and her love for me, a difficult situation. When I introduced my dad, Edward, to Abigail's parents, their true selves came out. The awkward moment was already noticeable, but there was more to come. My dad, a carefree and unconventional person who doesn't care about societal rules, appeared a bit messy. Janet, Benjamin couldn't help but laugh at the sight. Edward, not bothered by their teasing, simply grinned and chose not to get involved in any negativity. Ah, you must be Edward, Abigail's father-in-law. It's nice to finally meet you, Janet said, breaking into laughter. The pleasure's all mine, Janet. Abigail and Jack have shared a lot about you and Benjamin, Edward replied with a smile. Benjamin noticed Edward's unique look and complimented him. Edward appreciated the comment, emphasizing his love for being different and expressing himself. Even though some people laughed, Edward didn't change who he was. Abigail, Edward's daughter, chimed in, saying, Dad, come on. We're all unique in our own ways, Benjamin. Our differences make life more exciting. 
Embracing diversity opens up new ways of thinking and chances for personal development. Please always be kind and considerate. Edward is an amazing person, and I'm proud to call him my father. Abigail, we're just having some harmless fun. Don't worry, I'm used to it. Life has taught me to focus on the good and let go of the rest. It was painful to see my loved ones, my wife, and my father facing disrespect. A part of me wanted to react with anger and seek revenge for the pain they endured. However, I didn't know how. They were bigger than me in every way, and exposing them as classists could lead to Abigail and me ending our relationship, which I didn't want. As my love for Abigail deepened, I proposed to her in a simple but genuine way. I informed friends and family as I wanted to celebrate with our loved ones once she said yes. As my dad and Abigail's parents interacted more, comments about my father and our less than lavish lifestyle bothered them. Tension rose during the wedding preparations and a dinner incident at their house acted as a catalyst for what would happen on our wedding day. During one dinner, the conversation turned to wedding preparations. I hoped for a smooth celebration, but my father's unconventional attire became a topic. I tried to steer the conversation towards the love and happiness of the occasion, emphasizing the importance of embracing each other's uniqueness. An uncomfortable silence filled the room as Janet and Benjamin, once again claiming to be joking, continued with their tired banter. Abigail, my dad, and I were growing weary of their repeated jests. Wanting to shift the mood, I turned to Janet and Benjamin, asking for wedding vendor and catering suggestions. Hey, Jack, maybe your dad has some unique ideas for the wedding, Benjamin suggested with a smirk. How about hiring a wandering troubadour and serving artisanal chaos instead of a grand feast? Edward would love that, right? My patience wore thin as I defended my dad's individuality. Enough with the jokes. We respect and love Edward just the way he is. Dismissively, Janet responded, Lighten up. It's all in good fun, but I couldn't let it slide. It's not just a joke. It's been going on for four months. Edward is important to us, and we won't tolerate disrespect towards him. The tension escalated as my parents and I demanded respect. Even when my dad hinted at financial control, I stood firm, emphasizing the importance of treating loved ones with kindness and acceptance. Ignoring my plea, Janet made a snide remark implying that our presence was an inconvenience. The room fell silent, the weight of their words hanging in the air. Janet and Benjamin exchanged uneasy glances, realizing the impact of their disrespectful remarks. Jack, let's concentrate on the joy of your upcoming wedding. Love is stronger than judgments and differences. His words reminded us that love and understanding can conquer challenges. The mood became happier, and we started talking about the positive parts of wedding planning, moving away from the hurtful comments that had upset us before. Despite brushing off those thoughts, they still stayed in our minds. As the wedding approached, we made the last additions, and excitement built up. Abigail and I were super happy, eager to kick off this new part of our lives together. The venue was all decked out with beautiful flowers, and the seating arrangements were spot on. Everything just clicked. On the day of our wedding, as I fixed my tie in front of the mirror, I could feel the excitement running through me. This was the moment I'd been waiting for. My dad walked in, rocking his old lucky suit from his singing days. It might have been a bit worn, but it meant a lot to him. Regardless of any bias, he looked awesome in it, like a quirky fashion statement on a catwalk. What do you think, kiddo? Do you dig it? He inquired. Isn't that my turn to ask? I quipped. You got it, champ. Now I'm giving it a thumbs up. Just rock whatever feels good to you. Your vibe is what really counts. Thankful for our support, his smile beamed. He'd always been true to himself, totally owning his uniqueness. I respected him for being so genuine. The wedding was amazing. The sun was shining so bright when Abigail and I promised to love and support each other forever. It was a happy moment with our loved ones all around. The party afterwards was so much fun with music, laughter, and heartfelt speeches. Everyone was dancing and having a great time but I noticed Janet and Benjamin giving disapproving looks to Edward and his outfit. I overheard their comments, even though they didn't know I was listening. Can you imagine him in that old suit? It seems a bit odd at this lovely wedding. I expected him to wear something more fitting. It's a bit awkward. Maybe we can suggest to the reporters and photographers to not pay too much attention to him. Despite the negative opinions, I decided to concentrate on the love and joy in the room. My wonderful wife looks amazing as usual. My dad, sporting his favorite suit, 
chatted with guests exchanging stories and laughter. He didn't let the judgment bother him, showcasing his special charm. As the night progressed, Janet and Benjamin kept making mean remarks, hardly bothering to conceal their dislike for where I come from. It felt like they were set on mocking my dad whenever they could. Every comment hurt more, and I couldn't pretend not to notice their critical opinions any further. I opened up to Abigail, telling her how upset and mad I was. She was really mad, gearing up to talk to her parents, but I intervened. I had my own idea to make a strong impression. I chose to speak directly to Janet and Benjamin, taking them away from the curious onlookers. I met their gaze, my voice calm yet firm. What's going on? Today is important for Abigail and me, but all I feel from both of you is disapproval and disrespect. Mind sharing what's bothering you? Janet and Benjamin shared a quick look before Janet spoke, her voice oozing with dislike. Jack, come on. Don't be so clueless. We expected more from today. We hoped your dad would make an effort, maybe try to fit in with our friends. I couldn't take it anymore. Your snobbish and lack of respect won't go unnoticed. We can talk about my job as a graphic designer, but going after my dad is too much. He's not ordinary. He's one of a kind. Your judgment is awful and says a lot about you. Let's not spoil this awesome day with your negativity. The buzz in the reception hall suddenly hushed. Benjamin observed Janet's behavior and, in a moment of realization, understood that their comments had been heard by everyone. I had cleverly positioned them close to the DJ booth, quietly picked up a microphone, and placed it on the table pointing toward them. The room hushed, with only local news reporters and photographers quickly documenting the unfolding scene. Your attempt to damage my father's reputation made you unaware of what's happening around you. Keep that away from me, Janet, Benjamin shouted, seizing the microphone and angrily turning it off. Meanwhile, Benjamin glared at me in frustration, and they both whispered about bribing the media to hush up their snobbish remarks. But the story didn't end there. I grabbed a different microphone and spoke to the audience. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being part of this special moment. I promise to share everything I can, starting with a little surprise, I said. Dad, join me up here and showcase your talent. To the amazement and happiness of the audience, my dad walked up to the stage. After a quick introduction, he, being a singing enthusiast, kicked off his performance. He started singing one of the songs he had composed for my wedding. Abigail couldn't help but shed tears of happiness, and the whole room hushed in admiration. It's easy for me to forget that for some folks, listening to my dad sing is like hearing an angel. Even though I'm accustomed to it, his voice remains nothing less than flawless. The photographers came because Janet Benjamin was known for her wealth. They started taking pictures of my father when he began singing. People also took out their phones to record, as Abigail and I danced to the song. It was a unique experience. I glanced at the crowd and saw their jaws drop. They couldn't believe that a simple-looking man with eccentric clothes had such a beautiful voice. Janet Benjamin looked surprised, but also a bit angry when my dad finished his song. The crowd erupted in applause, and photographers and journalists bombarded my dad with questions and pictures. Abigail was the first to speak, expressing how she didn't know my dad could sing so well, and it made her cry. She wondered why he wasn't famous. Before I could answer, my dad thanked everyone for their kindness and love. Reporters kept asking why he wasn't famous. My dad explained that not everyone seeks fame and money. He was content with his life, even if some people called him ungroomed and disgusting. People turned to Janet and Benjamin with angry looks. They looked embarrassed. I joined my dad on stage and said that some people prioritize elitism and money so much that they've lost their souls to glitz and glam. I encouraged everyone to pursue happiness in any form without letting others make them feel inferior. The crowd roared with joy, applauding our dedication to keeping things simple. As Janet and Benjamin approached Abigail, it was clear they were upset, expecting a reaction. However, my lovely wife chose not to respond. Instead, she walked away, joining my father and me on stage. We spent the rest of the night dancing, while Janet, Benjamin retreated to a quiet spot, bombarded by journalists and photographers seeking answers to their misdeeds. Suffice it to say, no amount of hush money could silence the 500 wedding attendees buzzing about their behavior on social media. The embarrassment was palpable, and since that day, not a single elitist comment has been heard from them.